Today we've been launching the Work and Cancer Toolkit and it's aimed at really three groups of people. The employer, person with cancer and the carer of somebody with cancer. I think the toolkit's a really helpful uh, product. I've been involved uh, with Macmillan on the National Employers Forum to develop the toolkit, so really encouraged that they've uh, talked to employers about what would be helpful. I can see it being used by my organisation through my occupational health service, my line managers and my HR team to give them access to information, advice, guidance and, and reassurance so that they know they're doing the right thing for, for our employees who are, who are going through cancer. Empower um, were invited to be part of the forum. We were able to input our views and our advice as a large company and Macmillan listened to what we had to say as well. Well at the moment there are about 700,000 people with cancer of working age in the UK and that's set to grow considerably and in fact if you look at a whole range of long term and chronic conditions, something like 21 million people in the UK workforce will have a long term condition or at least one um, by 2030 and that's a very significant proportion of the workforce. Cancer is really now becoming a chronic condition. Many people are living with their disease for long periods of time and are struggling with being able to stay at work. It's nausea, it's pain, it's fatigue like most of us in this room have never known it. Uh, it's reduced mobility, it's incontinence, it's lack of self-esteem. It's all of those that are being worked through. I work in a team of 18 people and last November, um, Julie and our team was diagnosed with breast cancer. Julie being diagnosed had a massive impact on the team. It was just a massive shock. We hadn't experienced anything like that before. When it came to the time that Julie was ready to come back to work, so when her treatment had finished, we knew she would have to be eased back in because you know, she works full time, it's a busy job. There's so many different options when it comes to returning for work and probably the most important thing is thinking about um, what's right for that individual. If a manager were to come to us with, a, with a, a question about one of their employees who told them that they've got cancer, we would explain to them you know, the, the impact of the illness on work day to day, the options available to them as a manager in terms of offering part-time working or flexible working. I think for, for HR it's absolutely critical that they really look at um, the behaviours and, and skills that managers have um, so, that, so that they uh, can make can make the difference between someone um, coming back or, or not coming back to work. Your policies aren't worth the, the paper they're written on unless your managers actually know how to behave appropriately. appropriately. For cancer patients, returning to work is a sign of normality. It, it's, you know, it's stopping this thing getting in the way of real life. And it's as much the sense of normality as it is the um, you know, the financial impact of it. We all have choices and it's important that people take the time to think what's the right thing for them. But I think it's important to realise that the world of work isn't closed to you and uh, the fact that you have cancer doesn't mean that you can't work or you shouldn't work. For those who actually are in secure employment, the first priority is to try and keep them there. Because I think that is, a, that is a real issue. Once you're out, and into the benefit system, no matter what we do, it is more challenging to get people back to work. It's important for employers to support carers as well as people living with cancer because there's an estimated 1.1 million people caring for someone with cancer in the UK today and many of those carers are juggling full or part-time employment with caring. The most important thing employers can do is actually speak to carers about flexible working. Carers do have the right to request flexible working and this can make a huge difference to their ability to juggle work and care. The, the proportion of those in work who are carers is going to increase significantly. So this will be a very real challenge for, for uh, managing caring and employment duties in the future, yet another challenge for employers. All the research that Macmillan have done shows that going to work and being productive is part of actually the recovery process and people want to, to feel normal through, through their treatment and feel as productive as possible. So whilst these are all um, human stories, um, this is a big issue economically and socially and most people who have long-term conditions want to continue to work. We need the system, GPs, the welfare system, employers, to think about what people can still do, not what they can't do. All like-minded people getting in a room, 
thinking about it. We need everybody else. It's the people out there who aren't here um, that we need to send this message to. Macmillan is definitely the first port of call. Macmillan have a um, great source of information and advice through the toolkits that they've recently produced, but also through the helpline. I think communication is absolutely critical and no one should be afraid of cancer. Uh, everyone should be prepared to discuss it openly and freely and work to, uh, to get over it.